After a week off, we hit the home stretch of the 2022 Stafford Motor Speedway season in Bonza. It's a busy weekend, the penultimate Friday night, and then on Saturday, the Napa Fall Final. And what a stacked entry list. All types of star power in the Modifieds, all coming together right here at the half mile. This Saturday, 50 names, 25 of them possibly having a chance at a top five or win. It's kind of a toss-up. We've seen some great races in all the Open Modified races this season, and this one is sure not to be any different, whether it's Hirschman versus Priest, Pitcat versus Williams, Teddy Hodgden, George Brissett Jr., all these drivers coming in, they have a shot at being really good in one of the biggest races of the year. A lot of local names and a lot of outsiders that only compete here a few times a year, like a Matt Hirschman who won the Napa Spring Sizzler at the beginning of the season. But before we get to the Monaco Modified Tri-Track Series on Saturday, all five of our weekly divisions will be here on Friday night. Just a couple of events remaining this season and some really tight championship battles. Yes, first of all, you got the limited late models, mm -hmm. which is a 12-point battle between Jeremy Lavoy and Rich Hammond. That's just six points on the track. And, of course, Hammond has four wins, so he's got the tiebreaker. Lavoy has three. But lavoy has been more of the hotter driver of the two in the last month or so. He's got a couple wins in the last four or five races. But he and Hammond were battling for 7th and 8th yep. a couple weeks ago. And, in fact, they got together. But Lavoy hung on to the car, so it got a little bit sketchy there. Only two races to go. Lavoy looking for championship number three. And Rich Hammond, after how many years at Stafford? Almost 20 years, looking for his first track title. And the other close championship battle is the SK Light Modifieds involving three drivers, Tyler Berry, Tyler Chapman, and Alex Pearl. All separated by just 18 points. And that's just nine spots on a racetrack in what has been a very deep and large field this year. Every driver in the field, I think, has had a bad night in the SK Light Modifieds just because there's so many cars so much unpredictability and such tight competition. I mean, we've had so many different winners this season, and you still got drivers like Amanda West, Nick Anglace, Bob Charland that haven't found Victory Lane yet, and I know they really want to get to Victory Lane, whether it's on Friday or in the Invitational on Saturday. So we'll see what happens. Tyler Berry's been one of the more consistent drivers lately, though, a win and a second in his last couple races. And that Invitational on Saturday means you're invited. If you haven't won yet in 2022, and a lot of those names that Bonds had just mentioned are going to be a part of that event come Saturday afternoon. Let's talk about some of the championship battles now that aren't that tight, including the SK Modifieds. Todd Owen looking to uh, pick up his second consecutive track championship. So, for reference, the last time a championship in the SKs was decided by over 100 points was 2010 when Keith Rocco won 10 races. It's not easy leading the points by over 100, and Todd's doing that right now. 106-point lead. If he leads by 102 points after Friday night, he will clinch his second straight SK Modified title. Worst finish of the year, an 11th. <laughs> Not bad. And that was at the start of the season, I believe, on opening Friday night. So it's been a while since he's been at Victory Lane as well since Napa Springs Sizzler. So maybe he can bookend the season with checkered flags. The late models, Adam Gray, he's been on a run once again here looking for another track championship. It's incredible the season he's had. Six wins. Six runner-ups and, what, 13, 14 in a row in the top five? I mean, it's just unbelievable the year that Adam has had against tough competition. You got Gamba Corda. You got Tom Fern. You got Daryl Keene. Even Andrew Durand a couple weeks ago got mm -hmm. his first career late model win at Stafford. So the field is tight, and we've seen some tough racing between those guys. Fender bang in action, full contact style. We'll see what this Friday holds. But Adam Gray... He just needs to stay 52 ahead of Kevin Gambacorda. Actually, no, he could stay 50 points ahead. He's 52 ahead right now. If he's 50 ahead after Friday night, he will clinch the title because even if they tie, he's got the tiebreaker. And the late models only have two events left this Friday and next Friday, unlike the SK Modifieds that will also compete this Saturday, part of the Napa Fall Final. In the street stocks, we pinned him as one of the favorites at the beginning of the year, and he has not disappointed. Travis Hydar, especially lately, he's been on a roll ever since uh, that night he grenaded the engine here. <laughs> Uh, in turn number four, they bounced back in a big way. Well, one of their biggest bounce backs of the season came last race because he was involved in a multi-car incident on lap three of the 20-lap feature, fell to the back, came back, still got a top five. He has not finished outside the top five except for two races, which was one ended by a cut tire and the other one ended by an engine, as you saying, blowing up in turns three and four. He has not disappointed when it comes to being a title favorite. Last year, he was a favorite, had an issue during the summer in a slump. This year, not much of a slump at all. He's been consistent every single week, and he leads by 54 over both Paradis and Willette. 
If Haidar can stay 50 ahead of both drivers by the end of Friday night, he will get his first track championship. And then you mentioned Adrian Paradis. He is second in the championship standings, tied for that position, and that's with missing a race. That's unbelievable. That just shows how good that 19 has been all season long. He, has, he also has a DNF this year. He had a DNF wrecking for the lead in turn four, and he's missed a race, and he's still tied for second in points. He has been unreal since that missed feature, nothing but top fives, including two wins. Remember that Stafford hoodie that you bought at the beginning of the year? We're going to need it. We're going to need it. <laughs> uh, as you can see behind us, it is raining. The cold front has come through the uh, north central part of this state and the entire region for that matter, so we're expecting temperatures in the 60s both Friday and Saturday, but the best part is... We're dry. We're dry. There's going to be bright sunshine over the Stafford Half Mile. Hope you can join us. Racing gets underway at 6 o'clock on Friday evening. And if you can't be here, you can tune us in on flowracing.com.